So Ash going to be taken away from G2. This leaves the Varus and the Callista up. T1, of course they're going to go for the Callista. We already saw last game how they are fantastic at punishing your mistakes in the early game. A bot lane dives are going to be the play. Now if G2 were to lane swap, this would be the time to do it. Jinx, things like the Scion, these were all answers that used during the regular season to be able to match some of these strong laners. But they're saying, you know what, we've got Varus Orianna. We're happy to go toe to toe in the 2v2. I love this Orianna pick because specifically the Orianna is the champion at Faker has always looked so insanely consistent on. And the Azir really has dropped in priority compared to where it was during the LCK both regular split and in the playoffs due to some of the nerves that came through. So starting off really strong here for G2. Imagine Faker is still going to go towards it for the team fighting power. Well, we'll see. The Aurelian That'd Soul be a first. is not Here we oh. go. Aurelian Soul for Faker. Exciting stuff for sure. The scaling powerhouse. We've seen how commanding Chovy was on the champion. But I wonder if Nautilus is going to be paired up alongside this Callista. Wait, wait a second, buddy. First yeah. in his career, not yeah. just the first this year. The first time we have ever oh, yeah. seen Faker competitively, competitively play around. They're going so. for the Jarvan to boot. Wombo combos galore, looking to lock down. The Poppy lock in for Yike. You have to imagine this is going in the jungle. Nice response here from G2. Counterpicks are plenty so far in this series. Always the, po the possibility of Poppy support as well. Into a Callista, into oh, a yeah. Jarvan trying to gank bot. It's possible that we see that move to support, Betty. As My expectation is the jungle, yep. but you're definitely right that the flexibility is an option. Agreed. Uh, one of the big things as well about Poppy is that if you do end up going for a lane swap, she's one of the best level free divers in the game. So being able to have extra frat coming from the jungle is quite huge. The big thing for me with Faker in the last game is that Faker has had a lot of periods where he wasn't the best mid laner when it comes to playing out the lane, playing mechanically. But it has been a really long time since I saw him have a game where he just really looked out of sorts of where to be on the map. So that is the big thing I'm going to look towards. Aso, although uh, we have seen some players look completely different on it, Chovy being, I think, the main example, when it comes to executing it in the early game, does have a lot of team fight in. Uh, uh, Inevitability. I'm, I'm completely blank on the word. You know what I mean. Eventually, he becomes a big dragon. Inevitability. There Thank we you go. very much. He breathes on everyone, and it is something that, given his somewhat shaky form in the series, I think is a good call. Sure. We'll see if Faker can bounce back. Belveth, the respect continuing to be shown towards Yike. Respect to Yike. Uh, again, I still think this Poppy is jungle, but the Nautilus, I was about to say, Nautilus has to be banned here with the Renata ban heavily indicating from G2 that they want to grab that pick. Will they go for the Nautilus once more? Sorry, the Leona once more? Or are they thinking something else? Mickey, what have you got prepared for us? Obviously didn't have the best showing in the early game. That's a bait. Ignore yeah, the hover. Don't worry about <laughs> that. There's no way he picks Darius in the top lane. Uh, yeah, bye. Could oh, work really well. You called the poppy support. It could still be top, of course. I was about to say. Could but the Vi lockdown paired up alongside Oriana, chain of the Oriana Chain Omni. of Corruption. Ooh. Callista's going to have a rough time. If they really wanted to shout out BDS, a Garen lock in would be super cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what's big here is the fact that the poppy also has a good matchup into Kasanze, which naturally would be one of the champions that would, you would go towards when it comes to blind picking top, right? There's still the opportunity here for G2. Uh, it is Zeus, though. So it's he's just gonna again. he's just gonna blind the TF here. We'll see what Karius pick is going to end up being, barring uh, some some Jarvan, yeah, Jarvan support, support shenanigans. Uh, shenanigans, which of course the thing is, it has his options a lot, right? Like he's thinking maybe I need a range support, but Renard is taken away. Like you don't want to play maybe Braum. Um, uh, Camille is a oh, little bit oh, poppy. Okay. Okay. Now, I remember Carrier playing the Camille uh, once. It was, and he it didn't was, win the game, but he... So... I don't think it was on his back. Interesting, the game was interestingly won. enough, he also played it, like, I don't know if it was a year or a year and a half ago. Didn't go great. In that game, you are very correct. Yes, also, so not necessarily the guy. And as you're playing Camille into Poppy support... I, I know that... I, that yes! yes. <laughs> I mean, it gives you lockdown. If you can jump in, you put down your Hexagold and Maiden, you have the follow-up with the Falling Sky, you have a gold card, you have Cataclysm, you have a lot of circles, okay? I if do D1's, love me a circle If pop. T1 circles manage to kill G2 before G2 can chase out of them, it's good for T1, but I'm not sold on the Camille. Here's what I'll say. T1 have a lot of threats onto low mobility carries. 
you've got Avaris and an Oriana who hate playing into Jarvan traditionally. And I think Poppy as an idea is good. My question is, have they cooked too hard? By putting the Poppy into the support role, is that losing too much strength in the bot lane two versus two? Perhaps into the Camille, this is a matchup I'm not super familiar with, so I might be completely wrong. But the Vi diving in, I feel like that Yasuo and Oriana has the potential to follow up. But with the amount of damage threats from T1, I'm not convinced. Like, there's a lot of volatility in these drafts. It could go either way. I'm honestly just excited because with how these teams are playing, fights are going to be super important. The one big thing, though, is range. I do think that with this comp, G2 has put themselves in a position where they need to take full control by mid game because eventually, Aesol's range and the amount of zone control that he has, and the outside of Vi, the level of engage is relatively lackluster here from G2. So, lackluster engage combined with the fact that you are going to have to be the one generally that wants to go in with the Vi, with the Oriana Ball, with the Yasuo, because I like Lethality Varus a lot, but I don't think it stands up to Aesol when we get to the later stages of the game. Oh, it definitely doesn't. And with Aesol just being able to stand back behind the Twisted Fate gold cards, behind the Cataclysm going in, behind the Hexagold and Maiden, we'll have to see if the game goes long, whether G2 are able to extricate themselves from what will be a tricky teamfight situation. I wonder if we'll see Yike around mid quite a lot, if you can put Aesol behind and get Oriana in a position where she can just bully him out of the lane, it becomes a lot easier for Caps to make sure that Faker doesn't outscale. If we were to summarize this series, I feel like that the top side has been G2 favored. In particular, like, I think that their solo laners have been outperforming T1's laners in the laning phase. Um, but the bot side of the map, it's all Guma Carrier. Like, they have just been dominating their two versus two. Throughout this series, they have been able to find these advantages. And for T1, I think this game will be one of the biggest examples of them being able to snowball through their bot lane. This is a hyper aggressive two versus two and you have the ability to attack this bot lane early. So I'm excited to see what tier one's plan is. Can they get this bot lane off the ground and can they leverage Guma more, especially if Faker is not having the best series? Well, I was thinking Mickey has been one of the more inconsistent parts of G2. His game 100%. two in particular wasn't really able, and I think his Leona was fine, but it felt like it was more- An accessory. Uh, accessory due to the space created by Yike and Broken Blade. We'll see. The if you see the if you've seen the Camille support maybe you know a couple of months ago, so uh, they nerfed the Doran's Blade start, which mm -hmm. was insane on it. Can't do that anymore. Uh, they also nerfed Blood Song, so there are a lot of parts of this that are not nearly as strong as it was. It is still double Halo Blades. The level one is going to be quite pivotal. We'll see to what extent T1 is able, because you need to start winning this lane early and never stop. Double Halo Blades gives you a lot of pressure in that lane. Cool to see Carrier path up towards the top and actually get a ward in the middle bush for Zeus. It makes it a lot easier for Zeus to trade in this lane into a ranged into melee matchup. It means that Broken Blade can't just dash away. Look at bot lane already. We talked about the volatility. <laughs> Guma couldn't use the Marshall Boys, already interrupted by Mickey. But Carrier was able to get on top of Hans and trade back, utilizing the W. We've been seeing this more from. Uh, Camille's in early levels. Obviously, you're not going to get a huge amount of value out of the, the hook shot, given that you do have the poppy steadfast presence. Guma and level Kerio, 2, though, here yeah, it comes. One minion away, they get the level 2. They don't go any further forward immediately. Guma steps in, chunks out a little bit. Adaptive defenses for carrier possibility. Hook shot wall dive, get <laughs> the steadfast presence out. They're feeling it. I love that watching these bot lanes fight because they're super aggressive in the early levels. We see Ona doing a full clip bot side actually pathing towards top. As a yike trying to navigate his way around that ward, but will be spotted out. One thing that is big to mention, though, is that last game that we saw this matchup in top, Zayas was playing into a Yasuo that got first blood. Right, right now, we're looking at level 3 to level 1. Zayas is generally, outside of being very susceptible to ganks, really good at these early spacing champions. And this is, I, I think it's really important for T1 they actually get the crash here, because their jungler is pathing towards top, whereas Yike is on the bottom half of the map, and they don't have a whole lot of coverage as. Broken Blade, Jarvan's early dives are quite strong. He does have a shield though, but he's level one. Gonna get level two off one more minion. There we are. Zayas locks in the gold card. Wind wall comes out. Ono will wait. Mickey engaging in the bottom lane as Guma almost stunned against the wall, but not quite. Guma gets first blood and Hans Summer stunned. Or two for one in favor of T1. Meanwhile, on top side, Broken Blade is able to survive the gank. Zayas was forced to flash. We'll see if Ono continues. This is such a big wave. Broken Blade survives. Gets the wave under the tower. No TP for Zeus as well, means he can't quickly pressure Broken Blade again in the lane. But on the bot side of the map, it is really favorable there. Hansama ends up going down. 
The uh, trade 41, and I'm gonna feel too bad about as we see here. Oh, oh no, my man, you gotta, if you don't hit it, you gotta flash. Ooh. Wow, Broken Blade even almost able to get a kill back. Summoner spells spent a plenty, gentlemen. We're looking again at the junglers. Ona still has the flash, Yike level four. Broken Blade still has his flash as well. Yeah. That's Which actually level absurd, six is big. how that worked. Keeping my eyes on Carry, I thought he went for a roam in mid, but it looks like those mages are gonna continue to farm. Mickey looking for a play, wave stacking. Could this be a dive in bot? Nope, I stand corrected. I thought Yike was still hovering around. He's chosen to commit the reset, likely going to path back towards top. But these lack of summoner spells, I need to see these junglers do something. We look back at this play. If Mickey gets just a centimeter further forward before charging, Guma's stunned. G2 get at least one. And they did that level both. two versus level three, by the way. Yeah. I'm <laughs> but Carrier wasn't there. That's your window. You just go. And that's what you have to do sometimes to pop it. Instead, though, they do take a big gamble, and these type of lanes, double halo blades, do thrive on finding early leads. Now, when we look at the farm, it wasn't that bad of a trade. That's your fly forward by Faker. Faker! By Caps, just needs the auto! It's Faker! Just taken out by Caps in the 1v1! Caps finds the second solo kill of this series against Faker. We talked about how he is playing out of his mind this year. And he finds another one. That first person's in by Mickey. Carrier flashes! Oh. But the precision oh, no, no. call, Guma needs an order, but he just can't get in range on Summer. Blocking for Mickey, but the wave pushing in can be so difficult for Hans to survive under this tower. Yike has to make a beeline towards bot lane. Ona has his eyes as well on it. This bot lane is going to be so volatile, but it's Yike that's going to get there first. No vision for T1. Guma no flash. Carrier neither. Is it just cover? Dyke needs his Q. One second, here we go. Owner's on his way. Carrier stepping forward. Will the dive materialize? Ward across the wall. Yike dashes. Faker coming across from the side as well. Has the skies to send. As a result, Mickey's on his way. This could be the ball game right here. Faker goes in. Who tanks first? Already we see Hansama falling. Yike with a flash. Faker tanks the tower shot, but T1 able to get out. Karras looking for the flank. Has the shockwave, but no flash. Owner tanking on the front line as Mickey and Yike continue to collapse. Can Caps find Faker? Not today! Faker escapes. Guma falling low. The ignite not enough to take him, but the command attack will send him to an early grave. Oh my goodness. It's only three to three in kills, but the action is relentless. They're looking for... Oh! oh, Yike won't actually commit to the play. Chooses not to overextend. Wow. I can't believe Caps didn't connect onto anyone with the shockwave, but we look back at the 1v1 in mid. Uh, it's Faker that decides that this all-in is happening. Look at this flash from Caps. He actually gets behind him. So that look at this awkward loop-de-loop -loop that he's trying to do in the queue. Caps, back through him as well. Caps knows this matchup well. He is the ace-all guy in Europe, and he punishes Faker for it. We don't get a replay of the bot action. Nice initial dive from T1. Good overlap of the ultimate from Faker to make it impossible for Han Summer to do anything. Caps' arrival means that G2 can get the chase down. But ultimately, I still feel like this bot lane heavily going in the favor of T1. And we look at top two, a very different story compared to game one. In he goes. Oh, breath in. Zayas locks the gold card. Broken Blade just trading there. Not too much more going to happen. And this time around, we do actually see Zayas able to utilize that passive, right? Is able to build a sizable gold lead just in the isolate 1v1 because naturally, with all the attention being drawn towards the bot side of the map and the dives, the early aggression, both junglers looking to make an impact as the uh, ult is used, but only for vision. Zayas just using it to get back to lane and catch his wave. We are seeing, as you point out, that first kill from Caps already sets him up great. The fact that he's able to pick up another in the bottom half of the map, particularly given how consistent his Orianna performance was in the last game, is good for G2. Outside of that, though, this bot lane is going the way that T1 wants it to go. Yeah, exactly. And we talked about it coming into this draft, right? Expectations of the T1 wanted to try and make things happen in the bot lane, and they're doing a good job of it so far. 800 is the collective gold lead. But ultimately, when we kind of think about the comps, this Poppy is going to offer so much value later into the game. Caps is in such a commanding position. And while this Yasuo is struggling for now, admittedly, we know that this matchup is only going to get better for Broken Blade. Ghost is used. 
Season is this in the mid lane. Good skies is then though the shockwave. Baker dodges it, but Mickey. Mickey's here. Baker no flash, and Mickey slams him into the wall. G2 collapse in mid to find another kill. All right, Caps. His accuracy on the shockwaves not the highest this game, but it doesn't matter because G2 still converted into a kill. Carry on, on award. Strikes coming across. Carry on award. Flash forward. Chain of corruption. The lock up of Guma. And there's nothing he can do to escape. The chase continues. Carry doesn't have a flash. Can he hookshot? Can he wall dive? Or will he just die? And one of the things that was going well for G1, the bot lane gets punished so insanely hard. Don't sweep the brush that they're in, which means that Mickey can go for the immediate stun take out the big damage deal right from the get-go and you gotta put some question marks at t1's decision to say hey you know the puppy's coming out we're still gonna pick the camillas look here again the fact that they're in vision means that Yuma doesn't get to do anything he's the one that has a decent amount of gold not gonna be the case the chain actually connecting onto carry as well roots in their last second but honestly i don't know if it would have made it out anyway without the flash available no ultimate available either to try and dodge something and look at how things are swinging now. Gold bounty on Hans and Caps. Yike. Finding impact where he can. And this isn't going to get any easier for Callista the later we go into the game. No. Faker. Is he in danger? No. He's perfectly fine. Has the ability to get away to safety. But I did not think coming into today that I would be skeptical of Faker's individual yeah. performance. You were telling me coming into this series that Faker has had a great year individually. Yeah. He's been one of the best performing laners in the league outside of Wachovi. But overall, he's been an outstanding player. And to see him play the way that he has has been a surprise. The good news for him is that Gumayushi and Kari are still definitely on form and poised to still have an impact, even if there was a small blunder there in the bot lane. Another thing, this is a position that T1 wasn't, I think, mostly uh, towards the early end of Spring Split, when they were still dealing with, uh, obviously, the, you know, the Worlds uh, finals taking a really, or rather, Worlds as a whole taking a really long time, them making their way towards uh, some fun tournaments as well. It was Zayus, but then he was often on Aatrox, and I think that Zayus is, especially when he's able to generate a lead, Light has been able to hear, thanks to the TF, is, uh, is very dependable when he is on point, which I think today it's been, I don't think he's been really one of the big problems. I think BB just had a really good sack game, but most of those carry performances were on Aatrox. Compare that to the TF, where your impact is just naturally in team fights, not gonna be even remotely close. Credit to Zayas though, game one on the Twisted Fate, even though he was behind, he was throwing out more gold cards than a, a football referee, right? It was gold, <laughs> gold, 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 gold. It's it was impossible true. for G2 to actually get forward in fights. So I'll give him his, Fair share of due diligence here is we expect to see him still having a great performance on the TF this game. And what I'll say is that T1 have proven that their team fighting is still world class. Mm -hmm. They are a tenacious team, and even if they find themselves at the game deficits, they find incredible ways to come back into games. Their Baron plays in particular are what made the final so difficult for Gen.G to, and why it was such a chaotic, crazy five game series. So. Definitely not going to count them out. G2 find themselves with about a 1k gold lead for now. Owner sets his sights on the bot lane. Han Summer forced to respect it, knowing that he is on the weak side of the map, as more gold gets funneled into the pockets of Guma and Carrion. Yeah, the one problem I have is that T1 doesn't actually have that good of a team fight comp until he gets a like late, late game. Because yeah, Aesol by himself. Time. Yeah, uh, when Aurelian Soul basically single handedly makes your composition a team fight comp. Outside of that, though, particularly in the mid-game, I think you're going to be super reliant on getting Zayas out of that lane, get him out on the map. It was one of the big ways that T1 was able to turn game number one, was G2 going in aggressively and then getting punished on the collapse afterwards. That's something that T1 is going to have to find this time around as well. Because when you look at, again, just the power and the go buttons on G2, Yag presses are, there's follow-up from Caps, there's follow-up from Hans, there is follow-up from Broken Blade, and it makes it really hard to play out these early skirmishes. Also have Mickey's ultimate if they want to try and split a fight up, yeah. right? You knock the Aurelian Soul yeah, away, the then... Same thing. Uh, when we saw um, back in, right? Oscar playing as Gen G, mm -hmm. his ulties onto Keen were massive yeah. to allow Fnatic to win out on some of those team fights. Broken Astral Blade now flight. in some danger. Broken Blade. Just gonna get Star Surge a little bit. Singularity goes down. Faker at 111 stacks now. Usually around 200 is the mark you look at for the 20 minute mark. So well on his way towards that. You only keep scaling up quicker. There we are. And goes on. Carrier locked against the wall. Yike. 
here for the chase. Will they use the cease and desist? Go Ona goes back in, TP flash away with the Cataclysm. Keepers birded out by Mickey. On Summer now collapsing face. Cool. Guma locked up. The shockwave. Yike going back in onto Guma. Yushi. Han Summer has carry on his face and he might get Kate taken out by the falling star. Kevin trying to put the damage down, but it's two shows. Han Summer. Oh, he thought oh. he was gorgeous and he was! He flashes into a bush where there's a sentinel, so Carrier sees him, but Han Summer doesn't give a damn and puts him in his place. G2 found a three for one fight. I was expecting them to get wiped there. The TP was so fast from T1, but they actually convert it into a G2 victory. Han Summer does lose his life. He hands over a shutdown, but look at Caps. He's working towards a death cap second, almost level 12. Let's look back at this fight. Big thing here is I think Faker not able to find the impact with this ASOL as the W from Poppy is down. A lot of damage goes into Yike, but because he flashes, stays alive for so long that Nikki has his W. And look here, this becomes so messy. Guma, which is one of the main sources of damage, gets taken out immediately. This ultimate finds no one, only the splash damage, meaning that Mickey can kill Faker. And Hot Summer can find the other with the flash on the E. He's flashing away from the position. Was that? The Q2 Never mind. Yeah. flashes away from it because Kerry actually flashed on top of him. A little bit of a spectator mishap there where we didn't oh, see Kerry being on top of him. So I think also because he flashed into fog, it also interrupted, or maybe he didn't yeah, actually you, even get the auto attack get cancelled if you're in fog of war. And then the spectre obviously did see him in the end, but Hans Summer had bought enough time to pick up the kill. T1 now pushing in the top lane, about 1,000, 2,000 gold behind. Dragon being taken by G2. It will be two Drakes to nil in their favor. Now, expectations coming into this series were that T1 would be the heavy favorites. We've seen the number of predictions, and of course, this series is not over yet, and by no means is G2 in a convincing position where this game is secured for them. But already, I think G2 are defying expectations in how competitive they are playing against T1. In all three games, we have been seeing these incredibly close back and forths. And I'm excited to see where things pan out as Caps finds himself with a 2.4k gold lead over Faker. The last time they won a best of one against T1 was MSI 2020. That was four years ago. Is the chain of corruption going wide from Han Summer? The Destiny's going to come in and there's He's no dead. way for Han Summer to escape. He's so dead. <laughs> so dead. <laughs> As Han Summer oversteps a little bit. Mickey looking for Hex Flash across the wall. TP in, Hex Flash cancelled. Mickey trying to get away from the gold card, which was locked in by Zayas. Cataclysm into the Keeper's Verdict. Only hits onto Zayas. Guma still chasing. The collapse coming in, but Yike realizes perhaps discretion is the better part of Valor. This is what we were talking about. Make sure as uh, being bot. not getting the right. cancel. They have the ward, but not going to find that. This is a really big moment, right? This is what we're talking about. Use that TF. Although I, I do got to say, uh, Hans, you can't. I even if the TF wasn't there, probably would and then going down. He would have, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, don't, I don't think that was, a, that was a necessity. There is going to be a gold influx here for T1. My main issue, again, is going to be how are these team fights going to play out when the Orianna is this fed? Death because right now, done. death cap done at seven, almost 17 minutes, whereas Faker is sitting at less gold than Yike. It's, uh, it's, I mean, game one, Faker bounced back, to his credit. His, his, his ear ended up being godlike, and he had a huge impact in the game. But uh, so far in games two and three, it has not been the Faker show. Oh. He has flash. And the thing is, he should never get close enough to this way for BB to really be able to collapse. Yeah, he's fine. The singularity, the range you have on it, obviously you can, you know, breathe a little bit of fire on it as well to help those minions die. Harold's likely going to be dropped attacks. mid now. There's an opportunity here for T1. So they actually have their sights set on the bot lane. The Guma and Zayas going to path down towards the bottom side, then go back to mid. Hans Summer, Caps, and Mickey answering. It's only Broken Blade in bot lane. Yike coming up, opening through mid right now. Only deeper ward. You would like to see this in the lane just to spot T1's movements on the map. What that did show us is how good the single target damage is. That's the one thing you need to be careful of. If you are G2, don't overextend this Guma. Oh, All the way onto Guma, the flash away, Steadfast Presence, Mickey can't find the stun, and Guma will be able to get the blast gun in time. Yike misses the bolt breaker, and now he's on the wrong side of dodge. Flashes away, Cataclysm, Shockwave, dodge with the Hexagold to made him, and Yike locked up and shut out by T1. Over commitment there from G2, they're getting a little overzealous. They get the summoner spells out from Guma Yushi, but it was so difficult for the rest of G2 to follow. No Broken Blade Ultimate to connect. Caps' shockwave doesn't connect, and all of a sudden that goal gap is closing quickly, and this is the thing about T1. They're quick to punish your mistakes, 
and they are more than willing to fight you if you bring the fight to them. Yeah, also investing his flash there, so the range of the Vi going to be a little bit easier to deal with. Big thing there is that there's no objective to be taken. As we take another look here, it just starts up with Guma extending the play with the flash. The double knockup from Owner, absolutely pivotal here. If Mickey had been able to connect that stun, a really nice sidestep there from Guma to dodge the Q from Yai, that could have been a very different story. They may have been able to follow up, but G2 was just so far behind. Really nice use of the ultimate there from Carrier. And T1 is able to find a punish kill onto Yike. That'll be his first of the game. And you can see you look at the gold at the bottom of your screen. Both AD carries sitting at four deaths, both supports with an impressive KDA. Uh, <laughs> Jungle is in a pretty good position, but that gold advantage being gained largely from Zeus' passive, some of the plates as well, has put him pretty far ahead of Broken Blade in the isolated 1v1. As long as. Oh, as we do go in, Mickey. Oops, for the knockoff. Oh, it's done onto carrier caps. <laughs> Some damage well, as well. That was what I was leaning into. The, as long as Caps doesn't overextend, I feel like G2 can fight their way out of any fight, right? Caps just needs to not be in a side lane where he can get punished by the roams and the uh, global map pressure that ASOL and TF have. As long as G2 makes sure that Caps always has either protection or is playing around the known locations of the T1 members, for T1 it's going to be really hard to ever walk up and contest because there's so much damage as Mickey. Guma has no flash, Guma has no flash and no edge of night. Destiny out, smart play by Zayas to spot. The fact that Mickey was flanking, carry it. Going in with a hexagon automating knock back with a hammer shot, the cataclysm. Caps still stunned up, and Mickey's already killed off. Zeus caps down, the shutdown goes to Guma. Mickey trying to put the hammer smash oh. into the last breath. And T1 maybe breathed that last in this game. G2 find two. And Guma and Carrier walk away wounded. Broken Blade arrives to the fight and they make the combo happen. Yike and Broken Blade lock down Faker and Guma. And with the Baron alive, G2 are gonna secure it. T1 seem to be on the same page. We gotta kill caps, we gotta build caps, but you can't dive that deep. They are gonna give up the Baron, might get at least a mid lane turret for it, but not the trade that you're looking for. And G2 take a commanding lead. The confidence that we're seeing from G2, I would have expected them to not be ready for this collapse. Broken Blade is making his way down from top lane, but this is the dive threat from T1. The lockdown onto Caps, good ultimate comes out from Mickey. The follow up CC onto Zeus means that they're able to one shot him. But look at this combo here from Yike. Broken Blade is in range, the comms come through. Faker gets knocked up, Owner gets knocked up, and they convert it into two kills and a Baron. Impressive fight from G2 as T1 find themselves faltering once more. Drake available for G2 as well, will be Soul Point Ocean Drake for them if they can find it. A two and a half thousand gold lead now for G2 and they are close to taking this series 2-2-1, two, two and one, going to match point against the current world champions. And at a time when I think a lot of people looked at EU coming into this MSI as weaker than, not than it's ever been, but definitely in a weaker state than we expected them to be. Do gotta say though, the Rebel Baron power play does for not getting too much. If you only end up getting a mid lane turret out of it, it is nice, but by itself, not enough. And I think this is where the threat of the TF, again, ideally you want to set up for at least a 1-4, maybe a 1-3-1, but don't really get to do that. So the Baron itself is going to give a decent amount of gold, but outside of a uh, the soul point, which is valuable, Ocean Soul obviously not going to be your preferred Drake of choice. Importantly, 4G2 camps didn't burn his flash in that last fight. Was CC'd for a long time. I think there was a small opportunity in there, but held on to it. Carrier has no flash. Faker has no flash. Owner has his though. So the ability to lock down the G2 mid laner is still a possibility. I will also say that. Mickey's had an incredible game. Yeah. Like, his poppy in every single play mm -hmm. has been outstanding. And uh, considering his game one and two that were not the best, yeah. uh, he has definitely turned things around. He's been involved in 11 of G2's 12 kills. And I think that this poppy pick was so valuable and continues to be so. We'll see if T1... He's uh, poppying off, eh, buddy? He is <laughs> he's poppying off, Medic. Yes, he is. I'll give you that one. <laughs> I'm, that... I'm, look, I'm looking left to right, audience. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't get to it. I don't you, get this right. You cast with Atlas, mate. It's popping yeah. off, but popping off. It's popping off, popping off. Yeah, okay, costume with Atlas should prep me for that one. <laughs> that, one that, that one's on me. Thank you for the explanation. That's all right. G2 now setting up a siege. This time is going to be difficult to knock down, though. The wind wall should prove helpful. Carrier, okay, no hookshot wall dive. Stun card locked onto Yike. Singularity going down. Broken blade dashing forward. The threat of the Steel Tempest lands that Q3, no last breath to follow up. Another tower goes down, Carrier dashing in, dashing out. Dancing all about. The chase continues as T1 
Trying to be a nuisance to G2. They should all be able to back away together with this Baron empowered recall. Never mind. T1 continues to step forward. They're cautious though. Yeah, Ona doing the correct thing. Mickey, the last man standing. But the rest of the team will go back to base. The Baron wearing off soon, if it hasn't already. And the Dragon will be the next point of contention. So now both teams will likely enter a neutral state. Looking to get what farm they can. Secure as many items as possible ahead of the upcoming fight. You can see the uh, components of the Zonya's Hourglass being finished up for Caps, getting close to level 16. He's likely to get it ahead of the next Dragon fight, meaning he's going to have his level 3 ultimate unlocked. Han Summer very close to completing his Mora Mana as well. And G2 looking poised and strong, ready for the next team fight. Broken Blade puts the win wall down. Hexagon of Aiden coming out as well as Kevin dives onto the back line. Broken Blade down to half HP. Owner dashing forward and Mickey finds Faker. The chain of corruption follow up. The shockwave. Faker falls. Yike able to survive as well. Locked up under the tower. He'll die. Two for one so far in the exchanges. They are able to walk down towards the bottom side. Kite away. G2 continue to push in for the tier two in the mid lane. Broken Blade. He's looking for more. They'll just take the tower. Wow. And Broken Blade was just kind of testing the waters, and T1 said, fine, we'll fight you. They try to catch G2 completely unawares once again, but G2 were able to respond effectively, and it's Mickey. I, I have to see a replay of what happened with the Shockwave, though, because I thought that that was going to do massive damage. We'll see back. Maybe it was just the spectator. Broken Blade, he goes in. Obviously, this is a bit of an overstep. He's relying on the wind wall. Carry against the initiation. But then look at Mickey here. Doesn't connect the ultimate on anyone. Locks Faker up, and then the dive comes through. Big thing here is Faker outside of his own, again, doesn't actually find anyone to re-engage from Yike there, does end up getting him taken down, but with the rest of G2, and again, crucially, Caps still being unthreatened because everything was used trying to kill this Yasuo, which, by the way, didn't flash, Yike didn't flash. die. Carry into the wall on Summer there for the follow-up, just looking to chunk Carry around. Whoa! Well, that's a hell of a chunk from G2, the chain of crush and landing as well, as Zayas gonna try and look in the gold card to stop Han Summer from the chase, but Yike is here, and Zayas is not long for the rift. G2 find another two with Drake up in a minute's time. 26 minutes in and G2 are slaughtering T1 right now. They're running amok in their jungle and Mickey just continues to find more picks. One of the few bright spots that T1 still had left. Zayas tried to save his teammate. Not going to do a whole lot as the amount of damage that G2 have available. The amount of chase, absolutely impeccable. And one of the big oh. things we talked about again, it's the fact that Mickey being Poppy, outside of a gold card, which in of itself isn't going to be enough threat, he legitimately can just face check every single time. And T1 can't. No one on T1 can walk forward because if they end up meeting this Poppy, they can't escape. And then they just get taken down by the amount of damage that's there for the rest of the team. I was going to say, if you're playing solo queue, don't look at Mickey's build. <laughs> the Chaos, <laughs> Dead Man's Blood Song. Does a lot okay. of damage, but... but the McKills actually for the for the I love it. I, lo I love, I love it. Yeah, I, I respect it. I just don't want to see my supports trying to pull it out in the middle of a game as Han Summer begins to collapse on T1. TP into the mid lane. Drake up. Soul. The battle lines drawn. T1 would be walking into fog. The standard. Their only bit of vision. One ward now in the river. Faker needs to find a skies to send, but he doesn't have the upgraded ultimate. As owner looks for the flank vision on him. Owner. Just wants to get in here. Now out of vision. Last breath going in. It's secured by Yike. No damage between the two teams, really, as G2 just get the Drake and get out. But Yike is overstepping. Cease and desist on the back line into the last breath. Into Shockwave. the shockwave. Baker is yeeted the hell out of the fight. And even the base core might not be enough to save Carrier. Owner down. Guma down. T1 down. And G2 on the brink of taking a lead versus T1. T1 again, they try to force again. They don't succeed. Trying to take down Yike. He's able to turn it with an immediate ultimate. Faker's going to TP back in a desperate attempt. Yike won't find him, but I don't think it's going to make a difference. G2 is looking to end the game right here. Sub 30 minutes. G2 have torn T1 oh, of He's got the wave, though. This is really smart. Kevin catches it. The cannon minion dies, and there's only one minion left alive. G2 unable to advance. Intelligent stuff from the T1 support. Yeah. Can't clear, though. This is not your normal Camille, no Revenous Hydra available, so next wave, this is going to delay, but it just means G2 still get a massive gold lead, going to pick up the Baron and look for the end on the next push. G2 continue to defy expectations with the Baron locked in. 
this looks like G2's game to lose. Underestimated oh, at no. every turn. They have taken the fight to T1, and this should be the last ditch effort from T1. No flash for Ona, but the Cataclysm, Mickey locks him up. Ona, shut out! And G2 did everything they needed to to make sure there was no steal happening as the flash shockwave on Faker takes him down to half. Mickey with a slam into the wall, and Guma's hopes of winning this game are being slammed in his face. G2 almost clean acing T1. Guma dies. There it is. A clean ace for G2. Five alive for G2. Five dead on the side of T1. And with this, G2 will go to match point. The last Nexus Tower, merely a blip on the radar for G2. It is G2 T1. And G2 take a lead in the series about with only one more game win to advance to the upper bracket. And gentlemen, I said coming into this game, I wasn't sweating. Coming into the after the draft, I was sweating a little. Right now, there's a fan pointed at us, but let me tell you, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference. This as... poppy pick was yeah. incredible. 3-1-16 for Mickey. A massive turnaround from games one and two. And G2, they have been defying expectations as they bring us the match point. The inventiveness that defines G2, the Rek'Sai, the Zac, now the Poppy. We'll see if T1 have enough bands to work it through these G2 players. We're going to hand it over to the analyst desk to break down that game and lead us into what could be match point. Thank you so much. It is, in fact, a match point because yeah. it's two and one, and it is a best of five. It's G2 that do similarly to game two get their 